Hi, I'm Belinda and welcome to Belinda's Bobbles. Today is June 15th, 2024, and this is episode 15. Uh, sorry, it, well, it has been about a month since I was on here last. Uh, I'll tell you all about it at the end because we've had some different things. As usual, my life just went up in the air. But because of some situations, such as my phone breaking, the camera as far as on my phone broke, I have this new uh, phone, and so I am testing out recording on my new Moto G Power 5G, which has a lot of expanded memory. And because of it, I'm able to do, use a different lapel microphone that doesn't work with my little camera that Sam had actually gotten for me two years ago, hoping to help me out. Um, so if you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, please thank you so much for coming back. And you can find me at Belinda's Bobbles on, of course, YouTube, because you're here. <laughs> uh, also on uh, Ravelry, Gmail, and Instagram. Facebook, I don't use for this podcast. Um, I just have my old Facebook account that is basically friends and family that I know in the physical world, not on the online side. But you can always find me in a bunch of different places. I live in Texas, in the Fort Worth area, with my husband, Sam, our son, Seaver, who just graduated from college, and two chihuahuas. We'll talk about that later. I don't want to get started. I have a few things that I do need to get done here up at the front. I have some drawings to do. Though, if you haven't been here um, at the first of the quarter, I did a make along with Mandy from Mouse's Makes, and I did drawings for them uh, at the beginning of April. And yeah, at the beginning of April. Well, I have one prize that I never heard from anyone because. I don't reach out to you, you have to reach out to me. And one of the prizes was never claimed. So for the topping out, Mal, if you um, were a part of that, you have another chance to win a prize. The prize that was not claimed was the yarn that I dyed up myself. This is Nomad's Eggshell originally. 70% superwash merino wool, 30% um, nylon, 100 grams, 437 yards. And I dyed this up. If you want to see how I did it in the crock pot, there's a video on that. And along with the um, yarn, there is also one of these two cuff sleeves. Now, these were made, give you a little closer look. These were made by Mandy's husband. And he donated it as a prize. And I get to keep one. And the winner gets to keep one. And they get to choose which one they want. So I haven't been able to use it because I don't know which one I get to keep. <laughs> so I'm going to insert right here. I already did the drawing. And so I'm going to... Insert I did from um, from two to one thirty. I still had pulled out those that had already won, and the winner is Knit Alley. Knit Alley, if you get in touch with me, please um, get in touch with me on uh, either by emailing me, messaging me on. Instagram or messaging me on Ravelry. You can do any of those three. All of them are under Belinda's Bobbles and let me know which cuff you would like and your contact information so I can get this mailed out to you. Now, if I don't hit hear from Allie in the next 
let's say by the time I do my July podcast, then this prize, I'll pick which cup I want. And this prize will just go, I'll do something else with it. I may end up using it myself since it is the first yarn I ever dyed. But um, I have that taken care of. Now I have one more thing. During the yarn crawl um, in April, I had my first potiversary and you had a chance to be um, entered into the drawing there. So bear with me while I look down here and get my information. I've already done the drawing. I did not record it properly as far as while it was pulling it up. Instead, I've got a picture here of the winner. Now there um, were only, it was anyone that commented, um, only one entry per person, and I didn't require anything specific to be said. So the winner is at Allison Roos 8013. So Allison, if you could please get in touch with me again, um, don't send me your information over YouTube, please. It's not safe. But if you could um, send me a private message either through Instagram, Ravelry, or you can email me at Belinda's, uh, at Belinda's Bobbles at gmail.com and let me know and let me show you what you have won. Would any of you be curious about that? Okay, so for the Potiversary Prize, <laughs> I stuck it over here so I wouldn't forget it. Okay. <laughs> I have three of the Queensland collection, Brighton Beach. This is a number two fine. It's 45% linen, 35% cotton, and 20% acrylic. Each of these are 100 grams, 328 yards each. And the color is Manta Ray. Ignore the price on these because of course, I got them at on the lamb when they were on sale. But look at those colors. It does shine like that. And this is the same yarn that I made. You know, yeah, it was two. Two of the um, Secret Summer Crops by Jesse made. I made two of them. I just held it double because it was a little thin for me. But I held them double and I was able, I got a um, Jesse made tank or secret crop full length, of course, out of two of these held double or two and a half. I can't remember. It's on Ravelry, but this, but that's not all. All right, Allison, you have also won a It's Not Hoarding If It's Yarn bag. And inside, there are a few goodies. This is one of those um, ball or skein holders. Some needle stoppers that are bees. Clip on scissors. How does this work? I gotta remember how, oh, <laughs> take the tip off. Ta-da, there we go, clip on scissors. Measuring tape. And a Belinda's Bobbles tin has my logo on there. Let me get it over here. Yeah. <laughs> and this has just some random stitch markers. And I will also put one of my stitch markers for the channel on in there. So um, just if anyone gets any comments down below or anything, please know I will not reach out to you. I will not ask you for postage. Now, if it's being sent to another country where there is customs charge on your end, I'm sorry. I'm not able to do anything about that. Um, that would be your responsibility. 
but I try to do this in the least expensive way possible. And those yarns don't freak out over the cost because that's not what I paid. So that's not what the amount that will go on <laughs> the customs. Okay. So we got those two things taken care of. The other thing I wanted to go ahead and mention up here at the beginning of the video is um, next month in July, I will be doing Christmas in July again. And last year I made it with every day, even though some were shorts. Um, can't promise that that won't happen again. I'm not doing the family um, reunion this year or any big travel. It, this is going to be a staycation. I do have a week off during that time. Um, the rest of the time will be just what we're getting up to around here. But I do want have a few different places that I do want to take you here in Texas. I'm hoping to be able to make it down to Waco. There is a yarn shop down there that I've never been to. There is also a bookshop I've heard about uh, that is Harry Potter themed that I want to go take a look at. And if you're not aware, the Fix It Upper people, they have the Magnolia um, house and everything down there in Waco. And it's an amazing place. I've been once. No, maybe twice. And the chocolate chip cookies are so good. So I'm hoping to be able to go down to Waco, which is, it's only about an hour and a half drive from here and do a little exploring with you. Otherwise, everything else will be probably up here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, maybe over into Corsicana where um, the parents live and things along those lines. So I hope you'll come along. But I know not everybody is into the daily vlogs, and that's okay. Uh, I enjoy watching them because it's a way to get to know the podcaster a little bit better. Because, of course, I've got my makeup on. I've got my hair done. <laughs> you know, I've already had my coffee and everything before coming on here. So I try to put my best foot forward, even though you still see me in my true self. But on the daily vlogs, you're seeing me in the morning on my way into work. You're seeing me without makeup, more than likely. I'm sorry if that scares you. Um, but you just see a little bit of daily life. And it's not exciting. It's stressful. And um, I'm not retired. I am still working a full-time job. So that plays into the time and what we're able to get done. But I do want to show you a little bit about my town and the area I live in that also gets me out of the house. So far, weather-wise, we haven't hit a 100 degree day yet Fahrenheit. Last year, we were already in there. We've had a lot of rain, and so it's actually, it's humid, but we've it's kept the temperatures down into the 90s. And so I'm hoping this year we don't have an entire month or more of 100 degree days because then I don't feel like going anywhere. I don't want to get out of the air conditioning. <laughs> okay, as I said, I'm testing out the new microphone and everything, so bear with me. Um, I don't know how this is going to sound. I'll do my best in editing to make it sound better, but I'm hoping that this will go um, well. Um, I also had someone donate some funds to me that I got a nice ring. You know one of those ring lights? And it looks really good when I'm using it. The only problem is that that's all you see right here. You see the reflection of the ring light. So as long as I have these glasses, that's not going to work. So I'm still with my regular lighting situation. So I know it makes it to where some areas are a little more faded and everything, but hmm. this is, it's not like I'm making money on this podcast. I'm doing this for enjoyment, to build a community and to just get to know new people because that's, that is an amazing thing that has happened is I have gotten to know so many great new people. Um, Bill has said thank you, by the way, to those that uh, commented on his knit things last week. And so I don't have anything new from him at the moment, but uh, I will continue to share from time to time. If you missed... Go, you can go back on some of the last video and you you can see if you want to see what my brother has been up to. 
and his knitting and everything. So it is some amazing stuff that I hope to be able to do someday. All right, so we're about 15 minutes in. Do you want to get to some knitting and crocheting? I know I do. Okay, so let me get my notes here in front of me. Get my page up that I need. So, da 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 da, finished objects. I don't have anything. <laughs> have not finished anything this month since I saw you last. So yeah, there's no finished objects. So that was a really quick segment. So shall we move on? Okay. New construction. I was going to just work on what I had been working on and not cast anything else on. But Some of my projects got to where, you know, I've gotten past the lace and I'm just to Body Island. So, of course, I got bored. So, what did I do? I cast some new things on. So, what am I up to? I have cast on the Flutter Butt shirt. Is that fun to say or not? What? The Flutter Butt shirt by Jessie May Designs. And when I saw this, I'm like, oh, that's cute. I really like it, but that's so that's too young for me. And then a friend um, at On the Lamb made one. And she made the longer version. She did some different things with it and everything. And I'm like, okay, that is really cute. Then I looked in my closet and one of my favorite shirts to wear has ruffles on the sleeves and a ruffle around the bottom. I'm like, well, that's what this is. To give you an idea of what this is supposed to look like because I'm not far enough along for you to have a clue. This is a paid for pattern. And it's very size inclusive, which is, um, Jesse made stuff. Of course, I'm having some fun here with. It. All right, stop it. Um, Jesse made's items are always very um, inclusive. So, so that is the flutter butt shirt. I am making a longer version, but it's very light and breezy. She's even got shorts to go with it if you wanted to make a little pajama outfit, I guess. I don't know. But uh, the sizing on this goes from extra small all the way up to 5XL. And that goes from 28 to 30 inch bust all the way to 60 to 62 inch bust. And so it does have a wide range of sizes and it is just, it, it's a simple design, but it's so fun to, and I, you know, I love knitting. I love crocheting. We were discussing this at um, Knit in Public Day as far as whether or not we are um, knitters and crocheters that are project oriented or process oriented. And I'm both. <laughs> I really am both. I have to knit and crochet every day. I have to for my mental health. But I also want these. And I do wear them on my days off. I don't wear them very much for work, but I do wear them on my days off. Okay, so I am making this with Barocco Dolce. And these were on sale and the, um, at On The Lamb. And so I got all she had, which was four of them, which I don't, these are 50 gram balls. They're 50% cotton, 20% nylon, and 16% alpaca, 14% wool. And they're fluffy. It's so fluffy. And you get, for 50 grams, 
you get 175 yards or 160 meters. So I don't think that the four balls are going to be enough because of how I want that ruffle. So I've actually ordered another one of these that she didn't have this color, but in a silver or opal color. This one, I don't know the color name. It just says color 2024. I've got to learn where everything is. And this is where I am so far. The bag that I'm rummaging in is nothing special. It's just a clear bag. I had to, I needed a clear bag for graduation for Seaver to be able to take take my knitting and crochet with me. So I'm almost through the first ball and I cast on a size extra large using what did I use? US 8 5 millimeter. And I love how you know, light and everything this is, but at the same time, it's not see-through. But it just seemed too large, so I actually, if you see right here after the about the first inch or so, I came in and I just um, reduced it down. So that now this is a size large, which. It's what I did. Uh, I did the um, size large with Jesse made stuff for the last one of the her patterns that I did. But oh, I just love it. The inside, outside, <laughs> and so I've gotten about six inches. Sorry, yarn on the floor. I got just over six inches um, with this first skein ball, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to be doing it, I think, to about 12 inches on the body and then have the ruffle on the bottom and then the ruffle on the sleeve. So I'm going to use that. Um, I'm probably going to be using the opal on the sleeves and on the bottom ruffle just as accent. So that is what I cast on that I wasn't going to cast on because I have so many other projects, even after topping out Mal, I have so many other projects that I'm working on. So my other thing that I started, I'm trying to remember which bag I put in. Okay. I have it in my button and boo. Oops, sorry. There we go. Button and boo. This is the travel bag that I got. Um, with the um, Advent, 2023 Advent that was um, done with Maureen at Charming You, which she has her Advents for this year on her website right now. So go to Charming You if you want to take a look at um, the possibility of doing an Advent she does such a wonderful job. Unfortunately, I'm not using hers this year, but um, she does an amazing job. And the things that she's told me so far that what she's doing with it and everything, it's a um, Christmas past theme or an old fashioned Christmas theme and you will not regret it. So I will put her information down below for you to be able to go over there and take a look. So what I have here is a fisherman's rib, which I've stopped partway through because I was doing something else this morning. <laughs> fisherman's rib baby blanket. And it has a great garter edge that goes all the, you know, on both sides and across the top and bottom. And I have never done fisherman's rib before. I love it. I love how squishy it is. I mean, look how thick that is. It's just squishy, squishy. And I had started this with a different yarn, did not care for it. So I've gone back to this one, which is, this is Premier Anti-Pilling Everyday Dots. Sorry, Everyday Dots. 
It's 273 yards to 100 gram. So it's a number three light and it's 100% anti um, acrylic. But I wanted a little extra warmth because the baby that I'm doing this for, it's a winter baby. So I've just taken another one. I think this was more of my Nomad. Yeah. The Nomad Superwash wool. And I'm holding it double with it just so that I can get that extra cushy and the extra warmth. And I love how it looks the same on both sides. Now this um, pattern is by Snuffle Bean Yarn. You can either pay for the pattern or she has a free version and I'm just using the free version. And the reason I am making a baby blanket is that I have ended up with three of my nieces and nephews that are expecting first babies in November and December. So get ready to see some baby blankets going. So this is the first one that I've gotten started with. I already had the yarn for a, a crocheted baby blanket and I don't know what I'm doing for the third one yet. I haven't spoken with them. Um, so I haven't kind of gotten a vibe there yet. So I've got baby gifts coming up this year. And I guess whenever you figure you've got close to 30 nieces and nephews just on my side alone, there's there comes a time whenever explosions will happen and that's what's happening here. So I'm so excited for them and this, this is giving me an excuse to branch out and try some different things that I wouldn't have necessarily done. So that, but that's all I have, have started in the last month. In my in the works here, I have been working on three of my projects. I got the down the rabbit hole shawl by Agneta Nauclier. I think I'm saying that right. I'm getting close. It's a crocheted shawl, and this is part of my Make 9. So it's the only thing on my Make 9 list that I've started so far. But I am, I have finished another section. So it starts here. Goes into this section. Am I doing the right side? Am I even showing you the right side? No, I don't think I am. I think it's supposed to be this side. Okay. So it starts here. Goes into a little bit of lace. Brings in some other colors. Then switches. And now I'm in a bit of lace here. And this is just going to increase in size. And then all of these, she ha says to just leave them hanging, to just cut them and leave them there because she has a plan for them. It will have a border. So I'll put a picture up here of what this one looks like. And it is beautiful. I am using my bifocals go in here or my trifocals. I'm using a four millimeter hook. This is a Hobby Lobby, just one of their ergonomic hooks, and it's they're my favorite. They just feel good in my hand. And the yarns that I am using here, let me go back to my brain here. I know I've gone over it before, but it's been a few months. So... I'm using the Arkansas Yarn Company Signature Plush, which is the purple. And this is in the Royal We, which, and it's part of the darker side of Pretty line. And then I have Bashful Armadillo, which is a Texas dyer, Merino Nylon Fingering, and this is Paladora Canyon. 
I just love all those colors. And for my natural, it's just the Nomad yarn eggshell, which I got quite a few of those. So I'm just using them for some great bases and to add into other, other projects. And so this is the only crochet thing I have going on right now until I start. I've got a crochet baby blanket, but I wanted to try to get the knit one done first before I start it. And trying to only have one baby blanket going on at a time. Then what else have I been working on? I have gotten further along on my rivage top. Now this is a... I'm going to show you more of what's going on and tell, talk about this one in just a little bit. But this was actually a gift. And I participated somewhat. Life just got in the way, so I didn't participate very well and I didn't um, enter for prizes. But um, Allie with Little Drops of Wonderful and Claudia... Why does, why does my brain go bad on this? Hold on. I don't have my phone down here because my phone is up there with you guys. So I don't have my phone here. Let me take a quick look. Shoot. Okay. I will put it down here below. I don't know why my mind goes blank um, on this. It does every time. But they host the dodgy bag make along usually it's in the fall and that actually worked better for me but they did it in the spring this year because they were doing what works best for them which i fully understand it just i had too many things going on but um, part of what they did was they gave us the opportunity to sign up and they um, put us together with somebody else uh, within our country area so that way we weren't shipping out somewhere else and um you know, trying to keep the cost down. But we basically, I got a pen pal. It's the way I look at it. And Anne became my pen pal because both of us had things going on. We weren't able to complete things in the time frame we were supposed to. That was okay because neither one of us could do it during that time frame. Just, you know, I really did get a new pen pal because, you know, this was somebody I'd never met before. I've ne still haven't met her, but we've been emailing back and forth. Uh, she started watching the podcast to kind of get a um, little gist of who I am. And just, we have been um, emailing at least weekly back and forth. And so she spoiled me. She really did spoil me because this is her dodgy bag. Okay. With a zipper. I don't do zippers. I hate zippers. As far as I hate putting zippers in. It's got this beautiful, beautiful liner. But I'm going to show you the rest of what I have from her in just a little bit. But I had to show you this part. And in here, I have the Rivage Top by Drops Design that I started last time. And I'm down to this little bit on my first skein, which I don't have the other ones up here. <laughs> Maybe. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. All right. So, this is made with Circulo Whoopee. And this is the color Fire, I think. They're just showing it as color 9957, but I think it was listed as Fire. This is a 200 gram cake, 578 yards. It's a number two sport, and it's 100% mercerized Brazilian virgin cotton. And this is my first time making anything with Circulo. And so far, I am really liking it. You know, it's a little bit. It's not super stiff, but it's not super soft for cotton, but I think it's going to soften up after it's been um, soaked. But, so here I am down to this little tiny bit. And I had just 
split for sleeves last time. Get my hanger in here. So I'm down into the chest area and you can really see the variations in the color. It has this little bit of brown in here as well. See it over here too. And so now I'm just in, I'm in Body Island. <laughs> Shows you the eyelets on the sleeves. The only thing I have to do is come back and pick up these and put a edging that'll be the same as far as just a little um, little edging on it, on the sleeves, that eyelet. So now I just have to keep going and keep going and keep going. Hence, why I cast something else on. Even though they're both knit stitches, it was just I had to think about the other one for a little bit. Plus, as thin and fluffy as it is, it's moving faster. <laughs> at least that's what I'm telling myself, right? So at least now I have my next cake ready. <laughs> Since I had to get up and go get it. All right, so the only other thing I've really been working on was the silver bells. I got in here. Oh, inhaler. Hmm. And this is just in a one of my dodgy bags from last year. Which I it is dodgy. I mean, I need to fix this. <laughs> and I'm on Body Island with this one as well. This one is a little bit warmer to work on, so I don't work on it as much. But the good, but it's also a case of the body island is, you know, I'm just down here starting to do the body after finishing up the lace. I only did the bobbles um, for three rows of them. Instead of continuing it on down, they gave an option for that. I just didn't. I didn't want them down on my chest. <laughs> and I didn't want them on my sleeves, uh, you know, as far as down right around the arm. So it doesn't have that far of a body. And what I am continuing with is here on the side, I have put a little bit of garter, or not garter. Carter was the other one as far as on the edging, um, but just some pearl, pearl rows on the sides. And so I've done that on both sides and I'm continuing that as just a little bit of an accent that continues all the way down the body. I am using, I know I just told you all this, this, this last month, but just to remind you, If I look at the needles that are in the project, it would tell me better. I'm using US 8 5 millimeters. And I love the way this yarn smells. And the yarn itself is more than Nomad, <laughs> held double with Mirasol Inca. And of course, you know me, I didn't pay full price. On, <laughs> I got this on clearance. It's so shiny. You add it, and I love how it looks added with the white or the natural. And it's going to be very warm. I'm going to do short sleeve because I'm going to have to put something underneath it anyways. And so that way, I think it'll be plenty warm being short sleeve or elbow length sleeves. If I need to just put a, um, a long sleeve shirt underneath it. All right, so that is everything that I have been working on this past month. So what do we have next? Conf 
Confessions. I didn't really buy much other than I got the this yarn on sale. And then the yarn for the baby blanket that um, this baby blanket was stash, but the yarn, um, the other yarn for the crochet baby blanket that I haven't shown you because I haven't started that one yet. I'll show that to you next time once I get it started. But I went to Worldwide Knit and Public at On the Lamb Yarn Shop this year. I was actually off with my new work schedule, so I was able to go. And I was so excited. Gloria and her husband, um, they do Hank Me Home Tonight yarn. You've seen that with me, if you've been with me for any length of time. Um, they did a cookout. Hot dogs, hamburgers. They even had little banana puddings in individual cups and chips and it was amazing it was wonderful and I sat outside with them for a while got to meet some new people and everything and then I went inside to the air conditioning and sat around and we talked and had a great time and Heather did some drawings I won a drawing and what I ended up winning was Juniper Moon Farms Cumulus this is that super, super soft cotton that I love so much. The colors in this cake, and this is called Rainbow. This is a number four, and this cotton is so soft that it doesn't feel like you're wearing anything. I have the Vivian T made with some of this, and I got two skeins, just different colorways. This one is the Cumulus Stripes. Now this is 94% cotton, 6% nylon. Um, you get 250 yards for 100 grams. The number four, and this is called Summer Camp. Give you an idea of the colors. And I happen to have from last year's yarn crawl some cumulus that is like a golden yellow that I have that I was going to do a Vivian tank with. And I'm thinking I may. Do something with one of these with it instead. But I have that. And then let me show you what came from Wisconsin. This was my happy mail that I got from Ann when with the dodgy bag make along. Of course, I showed you this one. But I also got a second bag that she made me. Handles, drawstring. I'm not showing you what I made her as of yet, um, just because she hasn't had a chance to open it up. And so I'm going to wait till after she sees it first. Look at this fun fabric on the inside. And she sent me yarn. This is Wisco Sock, 80% superwash merino wool, 20% nylon utopia e w e t o p i a utopia fiber shop it's located in viraqua viraqua wisconsin so apparently this is their own they're on they're, and they're also on ravelry Yarn Shop, Dyer, Fiber Mill, Wholesale, um, Catherine Ashley Wright and Lisa Ashley are the ones that have it. Here is their information. There. And here. And I'll put some contact information down below for them. But it's self-striping. Look at that. Oh, let's see what color this is. Uh, this is called country fair yeah, country fair i do love it <laughs> but that wasn't all i'm telling you i was spoiled i have some no crack lavender hand cream and this is made in uh, by dumont dumont company in La Crosse, Wisconsin. It smells so, so good. Oh. 
It is so nice. Um, there was some chocolate. <laughs> this is the Baraboo Candy Company in Baraboo, Wisconsin. I'm really getting to know Wisconsin a little bit here. I've only been there once. And just a couple of little postcards. Some Door County Coffee, Country Morning Blend, and Chocolate Cherry. Notes of dark chocolate covered cherries. And this Door County Coffee is, let's see where they're out of, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. So I can't wait to try that. And I'm not sure if she made this or not, but it was just so cute. A little bitty snowman. And then um, some pleasing gourmet seasoning. <laughs> Salt substitute. And of course, got to have a cheese head of some kind. Not quite sure if this is supposed to be on a pencil or something or pen, but I definitely got a little bit of of a feel of Wisconsin. I just wish I got some of the cold air from Wisconsin down here. And I am so thrilled and happy. And this package came at such an amazing time. And it was a time I needed it. So that's it for my confessions. And so I'm going to just tell you a little bit of, you know, life happens and what, what has been happening. Um, you're welcome to stay for this part if you want to hear about what's been happening in my life lately. You're, uh, if not, thank you very much for joining me and I will see you next time and hopefully I'll see you for Christmas in July. But... I had told you before that um, Sam was doing some treatments. I just realized I don't have my ring on. I didn't put it back on after my shower. Um, but Sam was doing some treatments and he finished them. I think it was like 36 or 39 almost daily treatments. Um, and we haven't really seen any help with his depression. We think we may have seen some good results, but we're not sure because his pain level has been so high with other physical issues. And we're not sure. That maybe we'll see some um, help with that. But at the moment, we're dealing with some other physical issues with him. He's dealing with some really bad pain issues. Um, I appreciate any prayers that are out there for him because he is struggling at the moment. Uh, so it does not make for a fun time for him. And then in the midst of all this, we lost Steve, our oldest Chihuahua. I'll put a picture here of when he came into our lives 17 and a half years ago. Um, he has been Seaver's companion since Seaver was six years old. And... He is, we thought we were going to lose him two years ago and decided, Seaver decided to wait. Um, he didn't think he was done. And he's gotten another two years. Sorry. Um, we've gotten another, two, we got another two years with Steve. But unfortunately, we found him passed away. I guess it was last Saturday. And on that same day, my package arrived. So I just kind of set it aside and I spent the next several days just opening it. And she had these all packaged up individually. And I just opened one thing once or twice a day. And it just, it really helped me while we were dealing with the situation with Steve and just the change in our family, you know, just the loss of one out of three dogs has made a big difference in routine and noise level and it's just been made, made a bigger difference than I expected um, besides just the loss of some 
someone who, you know, yes, I know he's a dog, but he, he was a member of our family and he was a member of our family for a very long time. Um, Proby is have was his constant companion and he is, we've had to start bringing him upstairs because he got lost, escaped from us a couple of years ago and we almost didn't get him back. But ever since then, he's been afraid of the dark. And so he does not like being downstairs in his regular sleeping place by himself at night. So we have had to rearrange sleeping. Um, been several nights of not sleeping while getting it. But I think we finally have gotten to a new routine. Um, Ziva is just jealous over the fact that someone is getting else is getting attention. But she's she's settling in. So we're all trying to settle into our new norm but that's just where we are but I don't want to bring you down um, but thank you for all of you who have reached out to me on Instagram whenever I announced about our loss I do appreciate all of those special thoughts and prayers that have come our way and they have helped uh, Zever is settling into not having Steve around and he has the most amazing friends. They all came running and spent the whole evening and helped us with our own little funeral and everything that we did for Steve. And I am so thankful that he has this group of friends all around him. Okay, on that sad note, so thank you so much for being with me here today. Um, I look forward to seeing you in just a couple of weeks with Christmas in July. Uh, if there's any place that you're curious about in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I am more than welcome to suggestions. Part of my Christmas in July, if you weren't part of it last year, is we... I take you, I take you with me, um, or I recorded some of the Christmas lights from last year, so I'll be adding that in as well. So as we get into all this heat, we'll be doing a little bit of um, cooling down. Well, it's about time for me to go because I really do need to go because we're heading off for Father's Day with meeting up with my dad, and Seaver is here telling me it's time to go. <laughs> So I will see you in a couple of weeks and thank you again for joining me. Enjoy.